So when it comes to your medicine interviews, as we discussed in a previous video, which makes the first one of this playlist here, you need to really stand out and be in that top 20% of people that interview to secure your place. As ever, now that it's getting more competitive, you can see that a lot of people now are getting invited to four interviews for medical school in the UK and not getting a single offer. So in this video, I'm going to give you all of the key bits that you need to not only know, but demonstrate that you know when you come to interview and how to formulate those to sound really good and like I say, deliver a standout answer. And then I'm gonna give you a framework that's gonna help you deliver that outstanding answer. And at the end, I'm gonna give you the most important bit that you need to do to make sure that you stand out compared to the others when you sit your interview on the day. So as I said, questions about teamwork and leadership come up very often in the medical school interviews, both MMI and panel. So it's really important that you recognize that they are two separate things. Teamwork is a very different thing to leadership, although they often come together. And good candidates are able to recognize the difference between the two and understand that a doctor has to be a part of the team, but also sometimes has to lead that team. So one common question that they might ask on this subject is actually ask you to define one of teamwork or leadership or to actually explain the difference between the two. So I'm gonna give you a good definition that you can use in your med school interviews. So teamwork is the collaborative effort of a group to achieve a common goal. Whereas leadership or a leader is someone who can inspire, direct, and set an example for others to follow. So first, let's have a look at leadership and some of the common questions that come up and how to tackle them. When I sit on interview panels and I interview prospective medical students, I always find that the ones that really stand out are the ones that have a good framework for how they answer questions. So really important to just have a way that when someone throws a question at you, that you're just going to revert back to a way of tackling that question and a structure to answer it because it will come across much more confident, you'll look like you know what you're talking about and that will just like I say be that thing that helps you stand out compared to the rest. So I'm going to briefly show you a technique that I teach on my MMI and panel interview course which is a really good framework that I call SCARE. So SCARE is an acronym and that stands for Scene, Challenge, Action, Result and then Evaluation. So in your interview they might ask you a question along the lines of tell me about a time when you've demonstrated leadership. So I'll give you an example now of me going through all of those. So let's say um, we arranged a charity event that was due to raise funds for victims of the Ukraine war. And a few days before the event was meant to take place, the venue canceled on us. So we had no venue to host our event in. So what I decided to do was to take action by allocating groups in the people who were part of the event organizing committee. And what I did was geographically looked at areas that we could potentially host the venue at or have to host the, the event. So I allocated each group a certain area of the city and they were tasked with finding a venue that would be able to host us. So that resulted in after a while, we actually managed to get two or three places and we had uh, our choice of the best one and we could actually go ahead with the venue. Obviously we had to last minute tell people of the change of venue, but it still meant that we went ahead and managed to uh, actually still go ahead and raise two and a half thousand pounds for victims of the Ukraine war. So that was a really important lesson because it taught me that actually it's really important not to panic under pressure. And actually, if you are able to just think methodically and delegate tasks and be really systematic about how you approach it, in this particular instance, by using the entire team and spreading ourselves geographically quite wide and casting the net wide, it increased the opportunity for us to be able to come up with a solution. And in fact, actually, I think we were better off because the event turned out to be better and, and the venue was better than the original one. And it just showed that by not panicking and same as medical situations occur when something goes wrong and you have to think on your feet, that if I can apply those skills like I did of not panicking and thinking very calm, uh, calmly and methodically, that I would then go on to be able to deal with those situations when patients become acutely unwell. So as you can see, that is something that I just made up off the cuff there and maybe isn't the most polished answer if I would have rehearsed it and practiced it a little bit. But you can see that we placed the majority of the emphasis on the action and the evaluation because those are the two most important parts. You have to be able to show that you thought on your feet and demonstrated the skills that they would want to see of a doctor put in a similar situation or kind of the equivalent in medicine when they're dealing with a patient. And then the reflection, you need to show that you understood what's important and what you have gained out of it and how you've grown because when you are a doctor, you will need to continuously grow and learn from your experiences. You're not expected to get everything right as a doctor. It's more about how you learn 
from your mistakes, or not even necessarily mistakes, how you learn from the things that go well as well so that you can carry those skills, develop them and bring them forward. Another way to stand out when you're answering leadership questions is to actually understand the traits of a good leader. So if you want, it might be a good practice if you pause this video now because I'm about to tell you all the traits that make a good leader. Why don't you pause this video, take a piece of paper and a pen and see if you can write down as many as you can think of. Great, so maybe you managed to come up with a few. I think there are probably around nine traits that they want to see in a good leader. And I would say that these are the ones that you really should pay attention to and make sure that you're aware of when you're thinking of skills that you wanna demonstrate when answering questions. So let's take a moment now to talk a little bit about teamwork. If you've watched any of my other videos on my channel, I have lots that are gonna help you get through interviews. You will have seen that I highly recommend that you read the document called the GMC Good Practice Guidelines that you can find for free on any well, on the GMC website or by Googling. But they have some great stuff around teamwork and they have some practice guidelines which I'll put on screen now and read to you. So the GMC guidelines on teamwork state that you need to appreciate the varied skill sets that people bring to the table and the different ways in which they can help. You need to value the input of others and their discipline. Combine the different skill sets to provide the best outcome for the patient. And then when you answer questions about teamwork in your medicine interview, here are the skills that I recommend that you try and demonstrate. One of the trickier questions that they might ask you about in relation to teamwork and leadership is that of conflict. So that is when teamwork doesn't go well, or maybe you have a disagreement or a challenge, or maybe you fail at something. And it's about how you handle that situation. And this is something to be careful of because they might not even frame it under the context of conflict. They might ask you a question saying something like, are there any downsides to teamwork? But when you get a question like this, just remember the framework that I talked about with scare. And it's exactly the same, you just set the scene, the challenge that happened, the action here is maybe the thing that went wrong. This is where you can show your ability to assess at the end. So we'll go through the action, we'll say that how that action created a result that we didn't want. So your evaluation of that at the very end is the most important bit because they want to see that you can break down where it went wrong and show that you can grow from that experience and learn from it by saying what you would do differently and how if you were to have that situation again, you think that doing, taking a different action and maybe suggesting a different course of action might result in the project or whatever the situation is not failing or resolving the disagreement or whatever the context of the question is. One of the things they might ask you is what are the skills required for resolving conflict? And I would say there are three main ones that you need to mention, which are this, this and this. But with any scenario, you need to describe how the actions that you took resulted in a positive change. And that could be anything from people's behavior to the way that you communicated or the way that you decided to work together and how that led to improvement and growth down the road. So just to wrap up, as promised, I'm gonna tell you five things now that are gonna help you deliver a really outstanding answer with any questions that you get surrounding leadership, teamwork, conflict, and just how to really deliver those polished, answers, the cherry on top sort of stuff that's gonna help you get in that top 20% and get you to get an offer. Number one, make sure that your answers are true and unique. True stories, you can tell the best because obviously you've lived it. Usually by it being a true example means that it is quite nuanced and isn't cliche, but start thinking now of maybe three, one for each of those things, an example that demonstrates the skills and kind of helps you give a really nice framework answer of how you had a problem and then developed from it, or how you demonstrated really good skills and had a success from it. Number two is to try and link these stories to skills or achievements that you've made. So in that example that I gave, I was talking about a charity event that I arranged, right? So subtly, I'm telling people that I've also done this amazing volunteering experience and I've, I've led a team and you're already kind of insinuating a lot of skills just by painting that context of what you were doing. It's not anything to do with the question that they asked, but again, it's just a very subtle way to show that you are an outstanding candidate and someone who is demonstrating these traits and skills that they want to see of a potential future doctor. Number three is always relate these stories back to why they would contribute to you being a good doctor. Maybe they opened your eyes to something important, maybe they taught you some important skills, but the standout students can really show the significance of the lessons that they learned and how they will grow from them and carry them forward in their career to make them become a good doctor. This is the continuous learning, self-development type of style that they want to see because it genuinely will help you in your medical career keep 
growing, keep developing, and that is how you get better, just one bit at a time. Number four is don't be afraid to talk about some negative outcomes. It's really more about what you learned and what you got out of it, and it really is an opportunity to demonstrate and showcase your ability to grow. So don't be afraid or shy away from something that didn't go to plan or kind of resulted in a failure. And my fifth and final tip is to make sure that you have a really good conflict example to hand and ready and go and demonstrates all of those skills that we talked about previously in this video. So this video is part of a series that I'm teaching for how to be an outstanding candidate for medicine interviews and how to be in that top 20% that's going to get an offer. So if you want to watch the entire playlist of these videos, you can check that out here. But also if you want to learn how to go into more depth in each of these subjects, this video is really gonna show you the place where you can get the best resources to help you do that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.